Hey, what's going on everyone? James Nine Numbers here, and welcome to a short series that I've decided to create because I felt like it. In this 12 episode series, we will be going through some of the events, new music, new disasters, new games, new memes, and anything that I could find on the internet on the internet. Blah blah blah. Sorry about that. That has occurred in 2021. I'm sorry that I'm posting this series late. I had some stuff that I had to take care of, but I finally took care of it. So yeah, I was originally supposed to be like posting this in the end of December 2021, but due to some time constraints, I actually couldn't make it. So yeah, I'm making this up to you. Each, anyways, each video is going to be representing each month of the year in 2021. Duh. Now keep in mind that I'm probably going to be missing out on a lot of things, and most likely because I'm probably unaware of them at the time of the video is recording. So yeah, I came up with this idea back in September and I had to go through the internet over the past four months just to see if there was anything that I could find that I wanted to add in the video. <clears throat> I've been trying to keep track since, but I'm pretty sure there's probably a lot that I've been missing out on. So if you want to, you can tell me in the comments below. <clears throat> as long as YouTube doesn't disable my comments again, like God damn it, YouTube. Why why are you doing this to some of my videos, God? Come on, do YouTube. <laughs> Anyways. Oh my god, I am so sorry about that. Anyways, I'm also going to be mentioning shows that I've been watching over the past year because this year hasn't gone much better from 2020. I'm not kidding. And yes, I'm looking at my screen right now. I'm, re I'm trying to read my script because I'm <laughs> there's no way I can remember all the words. Anyways, also there's going to be a chance that I will be some spoilers for some of what I'm talking about. So I'll make sure to post timestamps so you guys can actually skip forward. Also, some of the movies I've mentioned throughout the series that I, I actually haven't watched them at all. So I'm only summarizing the synopsis just so that way I can understand just what in the world the movie's about. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoy. On November 1st, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial began. For those of you that don't know, Kyle Rittenhouse shot two people dead with an assault rifle and injured a third person at Kenosha, Wisconsin on August 25th, 2020. At the time, he lived in Antioch, Illinois with his mother while his father lived at Kenosha. He also worked as a lifeguard. He asked his friend, Dominic Black, to buy a firearm for him since Kyle was not old enough at the time. They gathered their weapons to protect a car dealership from being wrecked by BLM rioters by request. Black was on the roof when he heard gunshots in the area where Kyle was. Turns out Kyle lied about being an EMT. Yes, he actually said he was an EMT. But anyways, Black was charged with two counts of giving a minor a weapon resulting in death, but was thrown out due to the odd wording of Wisconsin's gun laws. Yes, the gun laws. The wording is literally why why those why they were thrown out. You gotta work on it, Wisconsin, seriously. He would also be part of the prosecution for the case as well. Black would pay a two thousand dollar fine for his felonies to be dismissed, and the prosecution prosecution per portrayed the people that were shot as heroes for attempting to stop shooting, though Kyle said he acted in self-defense. Although there were claims, there was nothing that proved he was a, right, a white supremacist. He was found not guilty for intentional homicide and was acquitted from all charges. It took days for the jury to come with a verdict, with video evidence of what happened on the day being crucial for the case. Needless to say, a lot of people were pretty upset about the verdict, with online posts to protest. Yeah, you could needless you could tell they were triggered, huh? On November third, the Ahmad Arbery murder trial case began. The twenty five year old was murdered back in February twenty twenty by three people. While he was on a jog at Satia Shores, he was confronted by Travis and Gregory McMichael due to Ahmad being suspected for multiple burglaries. Ahmad was chased for five minutes. According to a Glen County spokesperson, there was actually only one robbery reported. Yeah. <sighs> Travis did call Maude an ethnic slur and they said it was a citizen's arrest. His death didn't gain much attention outside southern Georgia until a 36 second video surfaced of his killing on May 5th, which sparked protests over racial injustice. It was filmed by the third guy, William Roddy Bryan. Although the three men pleaded not guilty, they were indicted for federal hate crimes, charges, and kidnapping. Kidnapping. Jury selection took two and a half weeks before the trial started. The McMichaels were sentenced to life in prison without parole, plus 24 more years for additional charges. Meanwhile, Brian was given life in prison with the possibility of parole. The citizen's arrest law in Georgia was repealed as a result of the incident. 
Furthermore, the McMichaels had to go to court, federal court in February for hate crime charges involving the case. Wow. Wow. Citizens arrest. Good job. This, good job. This is... Wow, good job, McMichaels. You basically did, did this to yourself. Now citizens can no longer arrest people if... Just, well, it's honestly for the best. Huh? Hopefully, um, Ahmaud Arbery rests in peace, and I'm glad he got the justice he, de he got the justice he deserved after a horrible incident. On November 4th, the United Kingdom approved a pill made by Ridgeback Biotherapeutics and Merck called Legavrio. Legavrio? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Which is the world's first antiviral medication to combat the symptoms of COVID-19. The pill is called Monupiravir, and it's mainly for people with mild to moderate COVID symptoms, those who are at risk of developing disease, and for those that are over 60. When users take the pill, it can help stop the virus from multiplying by targeting an enzyme that deals with reproduction and will therefore limit the amount of COVID in the body. Citizens are advised to take the pill if they test positive and within five days of developing symptoms. Citizens are advised to take four pills twice a day, which I think is just too damn much. Merck said it could provide up to 10 million in supply by the end of the year, but they haven't disclosed any side effects of the oral medication. The only known thing about the drug is that people who actually took the drug and those who took the dummy pills had similar rates when it came to health problems, which is, um, not great. That's a sign for, that is, that's kind of bad. But, then again... I've seen crazy. Anyways, poor countries will have quicker access to the pills than vaccines. You know, because of wealth and the economy and, you know, the basic stuff. Anyways, Merck will use a tier pricing system for developing countries in order to make some dough. Well, as long as it cures COVID. On November 5th, Famous rapper Travis Scott was holding a concert at Houston, Texas, containing 50,000 people. Prior to the concert being held, Harris County officials and organizers have had some concerns about holding the event. Although there were hundreds of security guards at the event, nobody was asked if they had a license to be in security. So irresponsible. But anyways, some reports said that police did not have the authority to stop the show. Really? Really? Wow. Avoiding accountability again? What is this? Oh my god. More, so much more promoting accountability. No, 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 no. Avoiding accountability, I'm sorry. There's so much lack of, lackage of it. Alright, where was I? Okay, there we go. Which was at the hands of the event holders. However, p police also reportedly asked promoters to end the show as people were suffocating. After 9 p.m. local time, the crowd started moving closer to Travis. People started developing cardiac arrest due to the intensity of crowd pressure at the point where people started becoming unconscious. It was only 30 seconds after the song started when that happened. People were screaming during the concert requesting for help and to stop the concert. He did have some responsibility as he actually could have stopped the crash and there is video proving it. Organizers, organizers could have also prevented the crash from continuing, but they refused to stop. Travis has a horrible track record when it came to safety at concerts. Despite being told to end the show, Travis continued the concert for 15 more minutes. Medical personnel were overwhelmed, even when, with audience members helping medical to save all others. Ten people in total died in the crowd crash, with hundreds more injured. Among the dead and injured were a 10-year-old and 11 people facing cardiac arrest. It has been proven that the crush could have easily been prevented. This was after a person was injured when fans was, were rushing through the VIP entrance in the afternoon. Travis made an apology video and let's just say it didn't go well with the public. I think me talking about their responses would be an underscoring how they saw the apology as people were not buying it at all. Needless to say, there were a crap ton of lawsuits against Travis Scott. Mm. Maybe he should just take the L and retire. On the same day, the movie Eternals was released in the United States. 
It features ten immortals from the planet of Olympia who arrived at Earth to protect humans from an enemy group known as the Deviants. They work and move to growing civilizations up to the present. The story involved a few of the Eternals, Sprite, Cersei, and Icarus, as well as a man named Jane Whitman, where they work as a, at a museum. A monster with regenerative abilities shows up and the Eternals leave Jane behind. Shocker. When they reach South Dakota to find Eternal Ajax, they discover that she died from a deviant attack that had just occurred. They also meet Kingo, who becomes a Bollywood actor who joins with them as well as his valet, Karen Patel, so they can film a documentary. After discovering that Aglamish and Amnesia Athena from Australia was found, the team unknowingly began defending a city that spawned a celestial known as Kiamut, the Communicator, once the quota of intelligent life has been achieved. They also find Durat in the Amazon in hopes of using his telepathy to weaken it, but he refuses. Crow, the leader of the Deviants, attacks them and is on the mission to kill all of the Eternals. After Giglamesh is killed and Thena regains her memories, they go to Iraq to retrieve the Domo from Iraqi Eternal, Makari, and they attempt to gather their energy to make a unum... a una... hang on... a unimine to help stop the Celestial, with Icarus refusing. Yes, it's actually unimine. Oh my god. After a trip to Alaska with Ajax's body, Ajax's life was absorbed. After a hefty battle, they managed to succeed. After the incident, Whitman finds a sword belonging to his ancestors, and the Eternals find out about kidnapping and meeting Thanos' brother, Eidos. That's right, Thanos has a brother. What a shocker. About where they can find their ally. And that's kind of where the story ends, for now. On November 10th, the movie Clifford and the Big Red Dog was released in the United States. Oh, and the movie involves Clifford in real life instead of being animated, where the movie is inspired by the cartoon of the same name, you know, from PBS Kids. In the movie, Clifford is a little pup who escapes a warehouse and gets lost in Harlem, New York, after animal catchers take the other puppies away from their mothers. We meet our main protagonist, Emily Elizabeth Howard, who, was, who had just moved to a school due to her scholarship, and she gets bullied a lot. Her only friend is Owen Yu, who has a slight crush on her. She has an uncle named Casey who is homeless and continuously struggles to look for a job, having to move in with Emily and her mother Maggie. Casey and Emily first meet Clifford where they arrive at a tent for rescuing animals by, by Mr. Bridwell. Emily isn't allowed to keep Clifford, with Clifford since animals aren't allowed in the building they live in. She wishes, she wishes she, he could be so big they could leave him alone and her wish becomes true the next day. After a crazy frenzy of hiding him from the superintendent, they go to the vet and then Mr. Bridwell to hopefully fix this issue. Oh yeah, and the doctor was um, played by Keenan Thompson. You know, the guy who played Keenan and Kel. One of the best shows Nickelodeon's ever posted. Anyways, Clifford gets noticed quickly and goes viral all over social media. A company named LifeGrow, whose main intention is to make their products as big as possible, believes he could be the solution to it. Yeah, basically they were trying to grow their food so that way they could end world hunger. So anyways, although they try, although they tried to find Mr. Bridwell, it is assumed that he died and the gang puts him on a boat where he's captured. After the gang breaks him out, Emily, Owen, and Clifford go to the Manhattan Bridge Park where she makes a speech about how their differences were special. After police determine that Clifford belonged to Emily, after the company made a put identification on Clifford, but magic, technology, plot twist. Yeah, Clifford gets his own giant dog so he can be doghouse so that way he can be safe. Oh yeah, and the owners of Life Grow also ended up getting arrested as well. So yay, plot twist again. I've gone through this one before, so I'll just make, make this quick. On the same day, YouTube announced that the amount of dislikes on a video would have become private. They say the reason is that people are targeting videos to put lots of dislikes in the video for the sake of it. Which is ridiculous, of course. People usually mass dislike because they believe that the video is garbage. YouTube launched an experiment to make a, the dislike count private, and it apparently worked. You can still dislike the video, but that's not enough, YouTube. Needless to say, this did not go well. In fact, I will link my video in the description as well if you want a little more context. Moving on. Oh, shoot. Alright, 
Two rappers named Hi Rez and Jimmy Levy released their music video called Welcome to the Revolution. It's a basically conservative music video, but hey, I'm all for differing opinions. I'm a centrist, so I'm very open. It was released on November 11th, and apparently they were launching their own revolution to fight the liberal media. They star, their hook lyric has was, We will not comply, we will not comply with the institution. Sick illusion that we won't be televised. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, that's literally their lyric. So, anyways, the sighting takes place in Washington, D.C., D.C., specifically in monuments and outside of the White House as well. There are so there were so many shots of them all across the. DC area as well. It, it was amazing, including with protesters, and yeah, there there were also protesters in the music video uh, that also went along really well with the lyrics. I must say, apparently the protesters are fighting for freedom and no mandates on a person's body. That's what one of them said on the protest. My body, my choice. They likely probably meant with the vaccine mandates and. You can't tell us what to do with the vaccines of when and when you're going to tell us when to get a vaccine. That's basically what they were saying. And, um, yeah. In the, the song, they mentioned about how the government is full of liars and that haters should step aside. Mainly because how, like, expansive government, expansive the government was. And politicians, all they care about is power and control. They also men mentioned that the food we consume may have pesticides, which is weird. And they also mentioned sheep and snakes. You know, because sheep just follow their leader and snakes just go, ah, they're hungry. But seriously, they also, they also mentioned about deaths by abortion by calling it a genocide. They're pretty pro-life. And one of the protesters even had a sign that says that, had, that was mainly anti-abortion because apparently abortion injured her daughter. Oh yeah, and some of the words the protesters were holding were, like, were blurred, probably likely to the fact that they didn't want to get the music video taken down. Because, um, you know, YouTube is very woke. And so, yeah, oh yeah, and also during one of the shots while they were going around, there was a good quote that based on I agreed with. Stop hating each other because you disagree. Like, come on. Like, seriously. You can't just agree on stuff. Agree to disagree. No. I even know some people that just won't accept that and go, Oh! And so, all of... Yeah, because all they care about is winning. It's annoying. Like, shut up. Oh, yeah, and anyways, they also mention about religion and government censorship and that there is so much fighting due to politics, even in their own, within their own friends. They also mention how, like, prescription drugs are screwing our lives over. And, yeah, that is very serious, you know, with the opioid crisis, specifically in rural areas. But, compared, but in the urban areas, you have a war on drugs that has been a disaster throughout the country. But, anyways... Yeah, politicians are also thugs as well, which I can agree with that, and media and corporations have basically are tr used to try to gain more power through division, and it's been working so far. Yeah, oh yeah, and both of, their s and both of the singers actually had shirts that says, No Sheep in My Circle. One of them, it was pretty obvious, but the other had was wearing a jacket, so you really couldn't see it until midway through the song, where you can somewhat see it. So yeah, the, the camera work was just amazing. Uh, like seriously it was awesome oh yeah and there was also like the American flag in some of the shots as well it was pretty awesome and the music video ends with a quote saying with a quote from Thomas Jefferson which says let me look it up there is no justification for taking away individuals freedoms in the guise of public safety so yeah they're pretty big on the Constitution and Freedom, the concept of civil liberties, which Thomas Jefferson championed for. You could disagree on a lot of the things he's done, but, you know, that's kind of how the way it works. So, yeah. I tried to do it as, an ob as objective as possible. Hopefully y'all liked it. If not, well, I tried my best. Alright, on November 12th, after 52 years of investigation... The culprit of a 1969 robbery case in Cleveland, Ohio, worth $215,000 at the time, 
equaling around 1.7 million today, was finally discovered as 71-year-old Theodore Ted Conrad. After the robbery, Conrad settled in Boston, Massachusetts suburbs using a fake identity under the name Thomas Mandel until he died on May 28, 2021 from lung cancer. He had confessed his crime to his family. Pete Elliott was the one who was able to cut discover the culprit after his father was previously in charge of leading the case. He found lots of similarities for Thomas Randall and Theodore Conrad on Thomas's obituary. Apparently he grew up near where Conrad lived. He worked as a, at a, a local ice cream shop at the time. Conrad was born in 1949, raised in Colorado, and went to New England College. For 40 years, he also sold cars and filed for bankruptcy in 2014. Turns out he robbed the bank because he was inspired by the movie The Thomas Crown Affair. Yes, that's right! Remember kids, don't watch movies, you're gonna, you'll end up doing a lot of time. Or you're, or you're gonna be doing a lot of crime. I don't know. On November 17th, two men who were falsely accused of killing civil rights leader Malcolm X, Muhammad Aziz, and Khalil Islam were finally exonerated after more than 56 years. Malcolm was killed with gunfire at an Audubon ballroom while giving a speech. They were part of a group famously known as the Nation of Islam. Malcolm X was controversial, but he left the Nation of Islam near the end of his life and became popular. Although they were both released in the 1980s, their lives were destroyed because of the trial. District Attorney Cyrus Vance led a two-year investigation that found that prosecutors, police, and the FBI withheld crucial information that would prove them innocent. A Netflix documentary who, called Who Killed Malcolm X helped refresh the resurface questions about the killing as well as the Innocence Project. Turns out, a former NYPD officer claimed out on his deathbed that he was part of a law enforcement plot that would weaken Malcolm X's security team to carry out the killing. Wow. On November 19th, the movie Ghostbusters Afterlife was released in the U.S. The movie begins 30 years after the events in Manhattan by Gozar the Goz Gazarian. One of the Ghostbusters, Egon Spengler, abandons his friend and fa friends and family and inherits his farmhouse to, to his daughter, Camille, after being killed by Egon. She and her two children, Trevor and Phoebe, move to Somerville, Oklahoma, where they befriend another kid literally named Podcast. The gang finds out from their teacher, Mr. Gruber Gruberson, that there was seismic activity going on in the caves and that there were ghosts that were involved in it. With the gang finding Egon's equipment and accidentally releasing ghosts, they start to have an all-out battle for blood. The original Ghostbusters, well the remaining ones that were alive anyways, came just as the gang was about to die, and they succeeded in defeating the ghosts in Egon's memory. Wow. Man. That, man, it's sad Egon died. Rip, rip to him. On the same day, the Gen 4 remakes that everyone was waiting for ever since the release of Omega Ruby, Pokemon Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire were finally released in the United States. States? I mean states. Yeah, in the Gen 4 remakes, it's basically like the same game, but except with some a lot of different features and some different Pokemon and some different storyline and mainly a lot of different features as well compared to the original game. First of all, we have to understand that the graphics are updated to the current times, you know, with N Nintendo Switch, and yeah, as per usual. There's also, you can also buy clothes, just like all the other Nintendo Switch games. While Pokemon can end up performing HMs instead of trainers in the remakes as a result of HMs being gone. Yes, HMs have no longer been a thing since Gen 7, I think, so yeah. It's, it, you can, oh yeah, and you also be able to have an easier time battling wild Pokemon for grinding. There's also a talent show, and there's also a grand underground people can go to to participate in mini games, dig for items, or build bases. The famous Pokemon following you around, which was first introduced in Gen 4, which was only limited to Amity Square, which by the way increases happiness faster, which is useful for some evolutions in this game, is also back. So yeah, oh yeah, and you can also catch legendaries at Romanus Park, and 
Giratina has an origin form in the game as well, which really neat. Oh yeah, and also Zeno apparently also had its own regional variant as well prior to Gen 4 coming out. Apparently it's called the Hisuian. Oh yeah, and Megalo Evolutions do end up making a slight return. I know that's not everything, but um, this is just a short summary from what I've gathered so far. And yeah, I'll sh I'm sure I'll learn more about this the more I learn about this later on. So yeah. On November 21st at 4.39 p.m. local time in Waukesha, Wisconsin, 39-year-old Daryl Brooks Jr. plowed his maroon red SUV through barricades and onto a crowd and parade members during the Christmas parade, with six people dead and 62 injured. Officers fired their weapons to stop the driver, with nobody injured by gunfire. The entire incident was captured on video, as well as the instances of people rescuing the victim. A Catholic priest, grannies from a band, and a banker, and at least 12 children were among the casualties. Apparently, he was driving away from the area where he committed another crime, and the area where the, the parade took place was a shortcut. From 1999 until the parade incident, he had committed 16 crimes, including two open criminal cases. He was arrested and sent to custody with the vehicle in the hands of the police. He actually wanted to be a rapper, posting his rapping skills on YouTube, with the video now deleted. There have been reports that a second person was involved in the crash. Classes were closed on the next Monday with counselors on hand for those processing the event. Also, it turns out Wikipedia might have possibly downplayed the severity of the situation after it was discovered that there was a request changing the title from Parade Car Rampage to Parade Incident. It was also originally called a car crash at some point, which is just unfortunate. It was not a crash as Daryl was found guilty of intentional homicide. Wow. Leftist? Rightist? Let's not get political here. On November 24th, the movie House of Gucci was released in the US. The movie stars famous singer Lady Gaga. Furthermore, the movie was based on its true story. The movie takes place in 1978 where the protagonist portrays Del Reggiani, who works at her father's small trucking firm. She meets a law student named Maurizio Gucci, who just so happens to be an heir to the Gucci fashion house. After meeting, meeting Maurizio leaves his family behind, knowing full well she only wants him for his wealth. Furthermore, Maurizio will lose his inheritance if he ends up being with Patrizia. After Patrizia gets pregnant, she plagiarizes Maurizio's signature on his father's will and receives his shares. Afterwards, she tries to make a Ponzi scheme so that she can have access to the rest of the shares, but she quickly loses her shares after Maurizio files for divorce. As a result, she hires some hit hitmen to kill him and go on an insane adventure in the process. After his killing, she and the hitmen were eventually captured and sent to prison. Wow, and I think she was released too, which is crazy. On the same day, the movie 8-Bit Christmas was released in the United States. In the movie, a, na a man named Jake Doyle tells his daughter, who wants a phone for Christmas, his story about his first Nintendo gaming system after getting into a car crash. The story is set in 1988, where he lived with his parents and his younger sister. There's a famous kid named Terry Keene, who is the only kid who owns a Nintendo system. Jake wanted a Nintendo for Christmas after a rough experience at Timmy's house, even going as far as to work with his father at his wood shop. However, the parents were concerned that the children are too addicted to video games and were considering banning it. Oh yeah, this is a time where conservatism basically was pretty prevalent and concerns about child safety and so on and so forth, which is just a care thing to do. We find out that Timmy has an NES power glove and goes against another kid named Timmy, Timmy Hodges. And Hodges gets so mad at losing, he martial arts the TV and the dog. Yikes. A competition is then held to see who sells the most Christmas wreaths to get a free Nintendo system. Jake wins after he was given information on Prairie Pines, where he could sell lots of wreaths to many other elderly people on one roof. However, the prize is just a world encyclopedia. Wow, what an asshole. Meanwhile, the boomers started their campaign on banning video games. After selling baseball cards to get enough money, Jake and the gang managed to sneak in to buy a Nintendo system. 
They surprised, they surpassed the protest that was going on, but then the system gets run over by a bus. Frick. On Christmas, Jake gets a tree for it and does eventually get a Nintendo system after working on the woodshop for a month. In the present day, we find out that Jake is a carpenter following his dad's footsteps. Wow. A, not a lesson learned. We need more life lessons like that in life. On the same day, the Omicron variant was discovered in South Africa and was named a couple of days later by the World Health Organization. Apparently, this variant is much more easily to, much more easy to spread, but early findings have noticed that this variant is less severe than others. However, the virus is able to replicate faster, even if the person has been vaccinated or doesn't have symptoms. Also, some antibodies will be less effective in fighting against this variant. It only takes a few days for the symptoms of Omicron to occur. For people with the vaccine, the symptoms tend to be more like the common cold. Scientists are trying the best way they can using genomic surveillance to help track down this variant. There's been encouragement for people who, with both shots to get the booster shot. And it's still, and this whole pandemic is still going on after over two and a half years. This is, this is ridiculous. Once again on the same day, Tumblr user, you, Tumblr user Shakira made a post of this clip. It's not the vibe. Stop! From a YouTube video. Shut up! I'm stressed! By HRH Collective with audio from the game Skyrim. It was reposted the next day on TikTok getting hundreds and thousands of likes on the video. Since then, people have used the sound in lots of videos to show an argument or a moment of frustration. Oh wow, that's funny. That is funny. And on the same day again, how many events did I pick on no for November 21st? Anyways, the movie Encanto was released in the US. The movie starts with a young woman named Alma Major Gall who is fleeing from an armed conflict with her husband and three children. After losing her husband, her magical candle suddenly creates a home where her family and other refugees could live. With that, they end up building a town called Encanto, hence the title of the movie. That's Disney magic for ya. Under Casita's protection, the family develops new superhuman abilities, but some of them are not being respected. One of them, Bruno, isn't respected because his ability is precognition, basically meaning he can predict the future, so he ends up running away. That's messed up though. I want the ability to predict the future. One of them, Maribel, does not have a supernatural ability, like most of us. But anyways, later on the house and candles start breaking apart. Maribel finds out from Bruno's room that he had a vision of Maribel supposedly being the reason why the house fell apart. Meanwhile, everyone is trash talking about Bruno because of his prediction abilities. After the house shakes and I hit him. Alright, I'm sorry about that. I hope this doesn't happen again. Hang on, where was I? Oh yeah, after the house shakes and people start lo losing their powers, they blame Muriel because of jealousy. Bruno is found inside the wall. After having another prediction, they bump into a possible solution that Maribel is not into and that she will have to decide for herself. After she and her sister Isabella made up, the house is repaired and Alma blames Muriel for all that happened. She gets so pissed to the point- oh my god. Oh my god, once again, I'm so sorry. This is why I have to pause every time. Oh my god. Anyways, she gets so pissed to the point, Muriel shouts that Abuela, which is what Alma is called, is the one who is responsible for breaking the family apart, which is starting to destroy the family house again. After the incident, hang on. <sighs> Alright. After the incident, Muriel and Alma talk about Pedro's death, her husband. After reconciling, the town gets rebuilt and the family gets back together. The movie ends with the family taking a photo together. Ah, oh, that's sweet. That's nicer than what just happened. But, you know what, whatever. It'll be fine. On November 26th, hashtag pick a side YouTube became a viral social movement after YouTuber Mom Max posted a video about a child predator on the site Invu. It was taken down for showing a man's butt 
A month after it was posted, Max made an update video on how hypocritical YouTube was by taking out videos that address and expose this serious issue. All the while, the site promotes non-friendly, inappropriate videos. That video has like, lots of YouTubers coming out against these people. Since the video posted, the hashtag went viral and YouTubers such as Drama Alert and Scarce have all jumped to Max's side. It's such a shame that YouTube has come to this. YouTube, here's a bird for you! On November 29th, 20 year old, no, no, 12 year old Angel Domingo Gaspar Gallegos, he's just a long name, died from a stray bullet that struck him in the back in, in a backyard. The bullet came from a neighbor's house which went through the neighbor's fence. Some of his cousins were with him when the shooting occurred. His mother tried his best to stop the bleeding, but he died at the hospital from upper body trauma. Police arrived at 9.30 p.m. San Diego time. His uncle was hospitalized for having a breakdown following his nephew's death. The family was hosting a family gathering to celebrate Thanksgiving. At the time, police were not able to determine whether the shooting was intentional or accidental. Jeez, that's unfortunate. And lastly, on November 30th, 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly caused a school shooting at Oxford High School. Earlier, he was at a meeting with his parents and the counselor after a report about his disturbing drawings. Apparently, his father bought a semi-automatic handgun on Black Friday, and his teacher reported that he was searching for ammo online. He also had a few notes as well about his thoughts. He walked out of a bathroom, likely to prepare, and started the shooting. Four students were killed and seven other people were injured, including one teacher. He had fired 15 to 20 shots and didn't have body armor on. The lockdowns lasted over an hour with some of the shots going through the barricades. He was charged as an adult on December 31st and was held in Oakland County without bond. Michigan has eventually recently passed a law, a statute that required minors held in adult facilities to be evaluated every month. At court, there was a ton of evidence against Ethan. His parents were also charged as a result of the shooting. His phone was also seized by a search warrant. Since then, there has been discussions about metal detectors in school. And that is finally it, everyone. Wow, I didn't think it was going to take this long. I'm sure I missed a lot, so feel free to tell me in the comments below. And yeah, after this, there will be only one episode left. I'm probably not going to do this again. Most certainly not, after what just happened. So, I hope you all are ready, liking it. It takes too long for me to, to prepare and make these videos, so I really hope you all have enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Time for the bloopers. Alright. On November 3rd, the Ahmaud Aubrey murder trial case began. The 25-year-old was murdered back in February 2020 by three people. While he was on a jog at the Tia Shores, he was confronted by Travis and Gregory McMichael due to Ahmad being suspected for multiple, multiple burglaries. Ahmad was chased for five minutes. According to a Glynn County spokesperson, Glynn County spokesperson, I think that's how, I think I, my script is messed up. Sorry about that. If it's wrong, I'm sorry. It's been a long time since I did stuff like this. Um, no, man, I, have, I think I may have to start again. On November 3rd, the Ahmad Arbery murder trial. On November 3rd, the Ahmad Arbery murder trial case began. The 25-year-old was murdered back in back in February 2020 by three people. While he was on a jog to Satya Shores, he was confronted by Travis and Gregory McMichael due to Ahmad being suspected for multiple burglaries. Ahmad was chased for five minutes. According to a Glynn County spokesperson, there was actually only one robbery reported. 